Hello and welcome to Sports Tonight. I'm Cecilia Mogbe in Lagos. Greetings to you wherever you are in the world watching us. In London, I'm Austin Okonapan. Still an action part of Sports Cecilia. Yeah. So much going on, particularly <laughs> with that World Cup qualifier. Remember the last time I was on this show, I said we needed to be careful how we go with the analysis. And now the game has been played. Nigeria couldn't beat the Soto. I don't even know how we're going to <laughs> talk about this game tonight, but Cecilia, I must say it's heartbreaking. It, it, it is heartbreaking. I mean, it, it's hard to start with this. But I'm happy we are not starting with the Super Eagles because if they've won, that would have been our starting point because the World, Cup, the World Cup campaign did not begin the way we wanted. But this show is a loaded package as usual. We'll be talking about Nigeria professional football. The research games that was played. Heartland still winless. Three defeats and four draws after seven games. Okay. Yeah, Heartland still win, winless. Remember Heartland Queens? Uh, when they started their campaign, yes, one game, and of course, it was four goes to nothing. So put the money where the joy is coming from. All right, uh, also on the program, we will talk about the winter, the youth winter Olympics. They are preparing and ready to go for that. But then, what's the problem right now? No money for them to go for that particular competition. We'll also be talking about Efuru uh, Marathon. Of course, it's all about race and race and race. And also, we'll touch down on the preparations for the Olympics in Paris, where you have the sports minister inaugurating a strategic committee that will oversee Nigeria's preparations and also to ensure that, yes, we surpass all the Olympics will be going all through the years. Remember, the best one has always been 1996 years. We all remember that. And of course, the last one, it was a fantastic performance for Team Nigeria. And this committee is actually for both the Paralympians and also for the Olympians. Uh, there's so much to talk about on the program. But Bolu is in the building. Uh, we'll be dissecting the Super Eagles of Nigeria's performance. And also, we'll have a guest that will be joining us from London, Austin, right there. He'll be joining us, a data analyst. So we'll be breaking it down for us what the Super Eagles can do better because they are playing in Zimbabwe uh, in Rwanda on Sunday, right? Yeah. That's what they'll be doing. But Austin, as I mentioned, is a loaded package. Yeah. It is Cecilia, you know, and that's why I always get into the show letting our viewers know that it's always an action-packed world of sports so they should fasten their seat belts and get ready to go on this sports uh, ride with us. Uh, what a story, you know, you mentioned what's going on with Nigeria as regards going for the uh, Youth Winter Olympics. Still that big elephant in the room funding, we'll talk about it. Yeah. You mentioned good things happening with the Nigeria Premier Football League. I cannot wait for us to get into that conversation also. And of course, the big, big one that happened today, the Super Eagles of Nigeria failing to beat a team that is ranked 153rd in the world. Shocking. Okay. Yeah. Here's a shocker. Bolu is in the building. Bolu. It's great to have you. Yeah, good to be back. <laughs> ah, well, it's just that the guy I came back is not the day I would have loved to come back. Ah, Sorry. It, it's good that uh, I, I didn't put my money where my mouth was yesterday. My <laughs> wife was arguing with me that Nigeria would not win. That we should put money on it. Thank God she didn't have a cash. <laughs> I would have been crying for my money loss. But it was a sad outing for them. I say it all the time. Many people may not agree with Nigeria have the best court in Africa. We have one of the best forward line in the world of football. I don't think there are three countries that have the best forward line more than Nigeria. All our strikers are in form, but we played Lesotho and we couldn't score more than a goal. In fact, it was a corner kick we scored a header from. And we needed goals against Lesotho. And our coach was taking off defenders, bringing on defenders. We say it all the time. Pesero's level, you know, no disrespect to <laughs> uh, kind of striker bringing on defenders. And we need goals. It's obvious his level is not for Super Eagles of Nigeria. Unfortunately, that's all we have. But at least there are other good news coming on from uh, today. Like you rightly said, we're preparing for the Olympic Games. I like that. I just don't want the committee that we see every time. Right. Set up guys and uh, let us get it. Because we are late to plan for Olympics now already. But it's still not too late. We can still work on something. Hopefully, we get our best out in next year in Paris. All right, let's start off with the Olympics that you just mentioned, talking about the sports minister uh, setting up that strategic committee to ensure that Nigeria is able to surpass that previous performances at the games we've been so far. Paris 2024, we know, is around the corner. But the inauguration was done on Wednesday in Abuja. And of course, you have a whole lot of people that is leading that uh, committee. Uh, starting with, of course, you know, the man who will be spearheading this particular one. It happens to be the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Sports, 
Ismail Abubakar, he's chairing the committee, followed by you have other people, Amaka Ashiofo is the secretary there. You have uh, people like Abubakar Waziri, Danladi Ibrahim, uh, Tunde Kokbola, uh, Olufa, Olufe Hinti. Olushegun is also part is also part of the team, and Olumide Bamiduro is also uh, a member of that particular committee. And as we mentioned earlier, qualification for the Olympics is ongoing, and we know that eight Nigerians already qualify for the Olympics. You have uh, three track and field athletes, three boxers, one wrestler, and one cyclist. And so the duty for them is to ensure that uh, more athletes, of course, will qualify. Qualification is still ongoing. More athletes will qualify, and then will come back home with more matters. Austin, take this from here. Yeah, you know, Cecilia, I, I, with my experience covering sports in Nigeria, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I don't like these <laughs> committees. And they, they all the time, it's same old same, and then they will give their reports and we'll go to the Olympics. And, uh, you know, our athletes will still complain about welfare, about the level of preparation, and all of that. But, if these people put people in a room to brainstorm properly and then have good planning in place to execute, not just talk, put it to action. Uh, if at this stage you tell me that, oh, you've started talks with Aaron O'Quadri, who would definitely qualify to represent Nigeria in table tennis. If you tell me, oh, you've put things in place to ensure that Toby Amuson is in fine shape, um, I say Brume is doing just fine, got some Brume and all the other athletes that might represent Nigeria at the Olympics in Paris, then, then we can start something because at the core of every preparation, you know, you must carry the major players along, you know. So, uh, I, look, when you were reading out the names, <laughs> shout out to all of them. I know all of those guys. <laughs> I know they are deeply rooted in sports. They mean well for the country. But let's go back and check what we're doing in nine in the 90s <laughs> and be sincere to ourselves you know a conscience is a free tool for everyone to use and examine themselves yeah. in fact it is somewhere in scripture that says it so well that if we judge ourselves properly we yeah. will not be judged okay. you know <laughs> are we doing what we we're doing in the 90s now Without can you one. look at our athletes that we had in the 90s and compare them to what we have now can you compare the state of school sports, grassroots development in the 90s to what we have now? Now it's just cosmetic. It's just talk. We just think that, oh, we can use AI to go to Paris and get on the podium. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work. <laughs> go and check what the Olympics team at the time went through to win that gold for football. Yeah. They were coming through a strong 1990, 92, 94, and it landed on 96. <laughs> And we got that football goal. Go and check what Shoma Joa had done before she started jumping. Go and look at the story leading to the Atlanta 1996 Olympics. You know, so I think these are the things we need to do. Search our conscience and say, guys, this, you shouldn't be talking about breaking records or winning medals. Let's first get yeah. on track. Get on track. I keep telling Nigeria, there's nothing wrong with just starting all over again. You know? And take those step-by-step -step processes that will make you do well. There was a time everyone was laughing at England. Oh, England is this good for England. But look at England today when they give proper attention to development. Now everyone is seeing England almost always trying to get to the finals. And we're always saying it's coming back home, but it never comes back home. But you can see that the changes are there. So I think that's what I want. And I'm sure, Bolu, you totally agree with me that we have gone past talks, talks, talks. We need action. And this Austin has said it. The truth is, some then when they come up with recommendations, we see a textbook. No, sometimes we need pointers. We need to see these things done because let's go to South Africa for example. The last uh, Olympic Games we here we go for medal hopefuls. Sometimes you need to go to this event and let's know we can do this. I can't forget the last Olympic. I think it was Declaton, a Ghanaian. Yeah. Years after everyone had finished, this girl yeah. was. she got to the finish line. She's made her name somewhat. We need to get right. South Africa now. Okay. See them. Look at football. They are not there yet for the men. But in terms of women in Africa, South Africa are up there. Maybe not the same level with Super Falcon, but they are the defending champions of WAFCON. You need to be intentional about this. And like Austin said, you need to put the players involved. Or okay. else, 
uh, we will still come back and start setting up another commission. I don't want us to be talking about that, but maybe we'll dedicate one day to talk about Olympic preparations yeah. because uh, it's something that we just can't stop talking about. But let's leave that now oh. and quickly oh. go to Worry Delta State, where you have Nigerian elite runner. They are set up for a big showdown in Worry. That's the peace marathon that usually takes place every year. You know what happened at, in that particular zone at a time, but then that November 25th race they will be having this year is usually for peace. And that's why having top Nigerian athletes will be taking part in this year's edition. Imane Jian, for instance, won in 2022. He will be up against a very, very stiff uh, challenge because he will be up against Ismail Sanjo and Steven uh, Dalop. These are some of the athletes for the men. And of course, for the women, you have Deborah Pam. Yes, she's there. She's giving birth now, married. But then she's still running, having a good time. She'll have her hands full because Joy Abiyeh, yes, she will be taking part. Elizabeth Nuhu will also be a part of the school. Elizabeth Nuhu, the brother, is also a runner. And of course, you have Patience Dalop. Yes, the, 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 another one. She will also be part of it. And we know that it's sanctioned by Athletics Federation of Nigeria, of course, by Delta State Government. They've adopted this particular running because most of the athletes running for Nigeria Marathon, they are, are part of these athletes. So you're going to have in corporate and, of course, schools marathon relay will also be a part of this one. So they're not just focusing on elite runners. They're going to be having corporates. So if you can run, yeah, you can actually go get it. And of course, schools marathon, that's for those who are aspiring to become marathon runners either for fun or maybe professional level. I You're also welcome. One thing that's been very consistent in Nigeria in the last, let's say, five years or yeah. more now has been running it's marathon, marathon <laughs> in different states. And I think I like it. Beforehand, it's been Lagos alone. Everybody has to find a way to get to Lagos. But now we are seeing it everywhere. There's the Okwekwe race, this warrior race. There are races in there, Abuja and everywhere. So I like that everyone is coming together. And the beauty about this one is it's not just for mm. elites. It's not for everyone is involved one way or the other. It just at least if for nothing, get active. And who knows? The winner of this one may not even be the star in quotes. Things like this can just inspire you to do more, do things like that. We want more of this. And to an extent, I like that it's also working hand in hand with yeah. the AFN. It means every race that is happening that is getting recognition, the AFN are also getting involved. I think that's um, also props to them as well. Yeah, it's also props yeah. to them. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let me just jump into that. You know, Bolu, you made an important point, but let me tell you why we seem to be doing so well with the marathons. You see, because we de-emphasize winning at that level. Like, like take a look at this uh, forum, um, peace run in Worry. The objective is simple, isn't it, to promote peace? But it's a good platform for our for our own long distance runners to go there. So we go there, and when they go there, we hear Deborah Pam, we hear Emmanuel Jian, we hear about the news. It's a good platform for them. When they go to the Okpekpe International Road Race, they might not win yeah. because of the elite athletes that are coming, but they have something that they look forward to. Yeah. Let's count it. There is the Jebulo Day Road Race, there's the Okpekpe International Road Race, there is the Coast City Marathon races, the Abuja, there's the Lagos City Marathon, and all of these long distance races are doing so well because the people who are organizing it just want to use it to develop long distance racing and see if they can get some level of corporate sponsorship and representation. And have they been doing that? They've been doing yes. just fine. Right. If you turn into football now, <laughs> they will find a way. <laughs> to monetize it 100% and put the win at all cost into it, if you put into proper track and field for athletics, the same thing will happen. But because this is long distance race, and people are saying, mm, there might not be anything in it for Nigeria other than we will bring the elite athletes to come in. But now we've got so much, and it all is right. good okay. for the development of long distance racing in Nigeria, Cecilia. Yeah, it's a whole lot. And I, lo I love what the, the, the way they're actually going about it. But then let's go to uh, Windsor Youth, uh, the Windsor Youth Olympics that will be taking place in January and February, precisely January 19th. That's when it starts. And how many days now? And the president of the Nigeria Coiling Federation will be joining us on this program to talk about preparations for Team Nigeria. And of course, as Austin mentioned earlier, funding is always the bigger problem. We're always 
we'll always address on this program anytime you have maybe uh, so less of sports or not so popular sports going for competitions like this. The president of Nigeria College Federation, Demola Daniel, is joining us on the program to talk about the preparations for the team and why we are not really hearing so much concerning these athletes, young athletes who are preparing to go for this event. Good evening. It's good to have you join us on the program. Yeah, good evening, Cecilia and Austin Okon Akpan. Bolo, good evening as well. Hi, right, good evening. Mm -hmm. So tell us, what's the update concerning Team Nigeria's preparations for the Winter Youth Olympics? And I must commend you guys for the show, but I need to start in this version. I'm going to hit very hard. I had Austin make, uh, making uh, some remarks on, uh, I think it's you, CC, about the committee that was set, headed by the PAMSEC, and uh, Maka, uh, who is the current uh, acting director of FIT and Honorable Popola in that committee. Let's put ourselves in our situation. What we are doing here is not for ourselves. We are flying the green and white flag of Nigeria. Be it lesser sport, be it the king of sport, football. This is all about the country. It's not about anyone. And this is also an Olympic. We are not talking about youth or adult Olympics. Olympics is Olympic organized by IOC. We qualify the country first as the first country alongside the host nation in 2022 December. I, I remember I was in this show as well to outline some of the things we want to do. I haven't done that till date. No training camp, no nothing. And I've personally met with the Honorable Minister on two occasions. Just in recent past, I just got back to my country here in Germany. Till date, we've submitted a series of proposals, everything to these people. They don't want to listen. Now they inaugurated a committee for Paris 2024, whereas before them is Gangwan 2024. The ministry itself is all about youth development, right? We are talking about kids around age 11 to 16 who put it all online for the country. So I missed their promotional exam for the country. And what is the country doing back for, doing, the, uh, doing for them as it stands? Now we've written to them, we've, we, we, we went to their doorstep begging, asking. Recently we even asked for a note verbal, something as small as note verbal from the ministry, which NFC wrote to them. The same Amaka, the direct, uh, acting director of FEE, said she cannot do that because we are not directly under the supervision of the ministry. Are we talking about that now or country first? The national anthem, again, I'll repeat myself, says, Nigeria calls and we obey. I'm a diaspora. I come back in there year in, year out, put in my money for the sponsors, the team at all, put in my money, qualify the country, and yet you are telling us that you can't do that. And other European countries, we, we, we defeated them with games, are in training camp. We have September to March in the winter season to train. Now we only have just next month to train ahead of the Youth Winter Olympic. Okay. I told them, I bought the ticket for these kids. Give us a note. I'll prepare the visas. I'll take them there. I'll, I'll fill the bills. Ordinary note they can't give us. Now these kids are busy training in synthetic uh, coiling materials in leaders, which is so, so disgraceful. It's disgraceful to a nation of, of, of this, this, this size. And now you are setting up a committee for right. the Paris 2024, okay. whereas you, you, you changed that one 2024 as the only African nation in the world of coiling. And we did not just qualify for one discipline, two, mixed doubles and mixed, and they are all a, 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 a medical potential uh, discipline for us, and they are overlooking that. Oh. This football now, we're bringing up billions. Is how sports should be run in our country? All right, Demola, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you. We need to go on a break. We'll get back to you after this. I think Austin will take it from here. Welcome back. We still have the president of Nigeria Curling Federation, Damola Daniel, uh, with us uh, talking about lack of funds for Team Nigeria to take part in the Youth Olympics. And of course, his, his attempt to reach out to the ministry and the outcome of it. I think Austin will have just one question to ask him before we let him go. Yeah, Damola, um, 
thank you for making out some time to to speak to us on the show tonight and um i know these are the sort of conversations we like having but it is what it is we will continue to address these problems until we find solutions you said something about um the ministry saying calling federation isn't under their supervision make me understand what do they mean by that and foremost uh you know they, they they are trying to say it's not recognized by the ministry of youth and sport meaning that we did not apply to be recognized by them which we've done in 2018 and also there's a letter in 20, uh, may 2020 they didn't do the needful but we are fully recognized by olympic committee then the Civil Olympic Committee wrote a letter to them on behalf of these kids. And a, a, a direct a acting director is saying all this, which is not right, in person of Mrs. Amaka, like I said again. And there was a time I talked to the Palm said, he told me directly, no money for us, Mona, go. Good luck to Una. That is not how this should work in, 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 an, in a country of over 200 million people and so rich and so blessed. So you shouldn't be saying this. We wrote a letter to them on so many occasions. I have it. If anybody wants to see it, I can put it out to the press to see. So they didn't do their needful. So they shouldn't be saying that. What you should concern, concern on now is the green and white these kids want to fly for, for the country. I, I totally agree. It's about, you know, putting Nigeria out there, particularly with sports where we, we don't get, you know, that's much recognition. We're talking Carl in here, and it will be good to, you know, um, stay on the gains of Susanna Cole and Tijani Cole when they put Nigeria out there through curling. Tell me now, before we let you go, what sort of road was it towards qualifying for this Winter Olympics in Korea? And what are the hopes of Team Nigeria still competing at, at, that, turn, at that competition? Went through a series of competition, playing against so many European countries, and we came up top. That was the road to the qualification. All fund, all funds came from me and my team. Now, having done that, if you could beat the European and pick the ticket as a first country to qualify, think that we can also win a medal if proper uh, arrangements and training facilities, or otherwise training tour, we are made available for us. Don't you think that we, we we would have been able to win a medal? If as we stand, if the next training tour, I can guarantee the nation that yes, these kids. Are willing to you know put it all online and then get a medal for the country but what are we saying what are we seeing now and the, the windows are all closing on us now mm. damola daniel thank you so much for your time uh all the best i just hope that you need a miracle i just hope something works for you and your team we'll talk to you again thank you so much for being on the show thank you like we always say still will rise nigeria still will rise coiling nigeria that's right. Okay, so that's it, President of Nigeria Calling Federation, Damola Daniel. I, I know, I know. Um, we shouldn't, we shouldn't flog this so much. He has called out names. He has spoken to the Ministry of Youth and Sports in uh, the Ministry of Sports in Nigeria, Sports Development, actually. So, if the minister is watching. You've been on this show. You promised to support young athletes. You promised to ensure that the grassroots don't struggle. You promised that we would build from bottom to top maybe you just need to listen to damola daniel and these young athletes that have qualified to represent nigeria at the bigger level cecilia we shouldn't be killing dreams yeah we shouldn't at all he understands what's at stake i believe they will act on time so that they can have that campaign they deserve and also go to uh, south korea in january and be able to represent nigeria well and be happy about that all right let's talk about the super egos of Nigeria, because I know Bolu wants to talk about this, Curly, but we'll, have, we'll still have him on the show before they travel. We'll know if they've actually secured the necessary funds and everything. But time is running out, so we need to go straight to the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Yes, at 5 p.m., that's when this game took place. And the prediction, even my producer, Irene Awama, talked about the fact that he was predicting 4-1, you know, before the game started. But when we considered the first goal, when it ended, when it first half ended goalless, it was like, oh, I thought by that would be two goals up. So we are laughing. And what happened in the second half? Lesotho scored. And the newsroom was actually quiet. And of course, for Shemi Ajayi, you know, had to save our faces. <laughs> and then it just happened like that. Ended one all. So the campaign for the 2026 
FIFA World Cup in Canada, USA, and Mexico starting on a very, very shaky note. Uh, should I take off my jacket? Because I think I'm ready to fight. To say <laughs> um, I say it all the time. Anybody can set up a team. You can make mistakes in your setup and whatever. But what really matters are your in-game decisions. And the in-game decision for Jose Percero today is called, let's say, okay, if I'm doing over 100, I'll probably give you two and a half. Because it okay. was so terrible. Taking, we need goals. We are removing our strikers, removing defenders, bringing on defenders. Sometimes you look at the best managers, talk about the Morales, talk about the Peps. And you, sometimes they can take out two defenders to bring two forward lines just to get the goals against a superior team. Now you are playing against a Mino in quotes. And you are still because all the subs are just like for life. Take out a, a striker for a striker, take out a fullback for a fullback. No, we needed better. Where we were saying Pesero's pedigree was zero. This is probably, not probably, this is his longest job as a, as a coach of any national team. Six months is gone, few months is gone, less than a year. Now he's been here chilling. We are giving him a leeway, and we can see that it doesn't look like we are going anywhere. The game itself, we missed too many chances as well. Mm -hmm. Talking about our forward line, Nigeria had about 16 shots. Mm -hmm. Eight of them on target. The goalkeeper target. saved seven, seven of them. They had over 70% possession. Like they say in sports, possession without penetration is useless. I'd rather not win possession than win game than to have all the passes in the world. You, at least the excuse used to be the Abuja pitch and the turf was not good enough. In yeah. Lega, Uyo had everything for yes, them. Sir. The hotels, everything was perfect. Unfortunately, Lekuru, I think this should be a wake-up call. I was one of those that underrated um, Lesotho that what, we should score at least three goals against them. Now it's a wake-up call that oh, you are not who you think you are. You may have the best squad, but you don't have a team. And we saw it on display. You can't tell me it's because Osimhen couldn't play. We play with Osimhen that we struggle to get goals as well. So it is beyond Osimhen not playing. It's beyond Indy not playing. It is the collective that matters. And we do not have that. If you don't train it, you can't perform it on match day. It's not magic. Easy. Austin, I know uh, Shola Edegbele will be joining us from London, a data analyst. Maybe we have to introduce him to come give us the, 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 the stats. Cecilia, when, when you were trying, I wanted Damola um, Daniel to go on with Colin. I didn't want us to get into this conversation. <laughs> so when you, said, when you said it's time to talk about the super angle, we got into that segment. But it's all good. Let's deal with it. Shola Edegbele is a football data analyst. He's right here in London with me. Shola, good to have you on post tonight good evening austin thank you for having me on the show today uh, good evening awesome. shall I, shall I, uh, good evening mr bola fantastic shall I, I like that i'm 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 just a moderator on the show i like that you are in the hot seat so i'm going to be throwing the questions at you the first time you came on this show i warned you about Oze pizero and his team it was when we're getting ready for sao tome and principe you say oh no they're going to do well. We won that game with South Tome and Principe. Then, against Saudi Arabia, warning signals came out. You said, oh, still no problem. They will get better against Mozambique. I said, Shala, there's something about this team that is not making it a team. After we played Mozambique, yes, we won. I told you that for the Super Eagles to be feared, to be respected, they should still play as a team. When NDD is not there, when Kenichi Enacho is not there, when Victor Isumin is not there, this should still be a team. Today, they couldn't beat a team ranked 153rd in the world. Um, the sort of had just two shots on target, and one was a goal. The Super Eagles had 72% of the ball possession and couldn't win that game. Shall I, all of those words you said about this team and their progress, you take them back tonight. Very good question, Mr. Austin. Um, let me put things into perspective today. When we look at Egypt, when we look at Algeria, they both won their games today. Egypt won 6-0 against a smaller African nation. Algeria won 3-1 against Somalia today. When we look at Nigeria, we drew 1-1. I must say, I did not expect this result. Before kickoff, I thought we were going to win 3-0 or 4-0. I didn't even expect Lisofo to get a goal. Also, we are now under a lot of pressure because out of all of the African qualifying groups, our group is the only group that has two teams that have been to the World Cup. We have South Africa in our group and we have now put ourselves under pressure with this result. So to answer your question, I'm very concerned now. Mm. Mm. 
hmm, I like that you're concerned. I'm also concerned, and with this sort of uh, result, it makes analysis so difficult. What did the stats say? What can you say about the Super Eagles today? And try to tie it to Sunday's game against Zimbabwe. So when we look at the stats, we did dominate possession. We had most of the chances, but we we were very wasteful. So, for example, Awani missed yeah. an open net, which he should have scored. Yeah. Um, the the sofa only had two shots on target against our goalkeeper today. Um, I've seen on social media, um, some people were blaming the goalkeeper. I don't think the goalkeeper was at fault today. Yeah. I think it was a finishing mm -hmm. slash striking issue. On the set pieces that, you know, I was praising the team on in previous matches, um, today, it looked like they had spent too much attention and time on their corners and free kicks to the point where they didn't really know what to do because it was almost over-rehearsed. In regards to Saturday's game, um, I do think Iwobi is our most creative player. In today's game, he was playing too deep, too deep in the midfield. I think in order for our strikers to score, they need good quality service. So it will be his key. We need to push him up front so that he can play those through balls to the strikers. That would be the main change I would make. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Bolu, um, I, I, I saw that it was, it was a bit difficult in midfield. Franco Yeka, is he struggling to have his place in this Super Eagles team, Bolu? everywhere. Even the check at this club in Brentford, he could start uh, maybe three, four, five games. The next ten games, he's sitting on the bench and also he's struggling. The truth is, if it's not working, it's not working. There has to be a way. The first thing you ask is, how are they training? What are they training? Because if you don't make these things work in training and uh, just put boys on the field of play, it will show. It is not their club side where they are together almost every day. It's a national team where they have, first of all, they will call camp on Monday. Many of them will come on Tuesday. One day of training gone. Then when they come together, if you don't put these things to work, it will not happen. If he's struggling, there has to be a way. You can't tell me as talented as Super Eagles national team is. If indeed he's not playing, there's a problem defensively. Joe Aribo, I don't know, maybe it's his form or whatever. If it's not working, it's not working. Look at what we did to Iwobi. Iwobi is now probably one of our first calls in the midfield. If it means dropping someone else there, maybe here and at your, Shemi Ajayi can play in that position. There has to be a way to sort that midfield position because indeed they will not play every game. It's one of the things that affected us at the last AFCON. There has to be a way. Frank Oyeka is not working. Let's look for someone else. We have players in the APFL as well. It doesn't have to be foreign-based players. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I'll, I'll throw this one to Shola, you know, concerning what you said, what we need to actually work on the position of um, Alex Iwobi, where he had to, I think he was trying to, I don't know the position he was actually playing because uh, we, I know we had the standing captain, I mean, Kelechi Enacho, Demola Luke Montawa, Awuni, Victor Boniface, all playing up front. And usually we know Iwobi loves playing behind a striker, but somebody was playing so deep. Uh, in the game today. Do you think maybe that was where the problem was? Or maybe defensively we're not just there because somehow, I mean, for uh, the, the first uh, the first opportunity of the goal actually came from Lesotho through Sempang, Celia, who fired the blank and luckily uh, you have, uh, you know, he was awake. I'm talking about uh, Ozoho. I mean, he was able to get that. 16 minutes into the game already we're playing defensively. I don't know. What do you make of this? And going forward are there some changes the coach would need to do to ensure we have a better team that will be playing against zimbabwe on sunday yes i think uh, bolu mentioned it earlier um th there aren't up to three nations in the world that have a better strike force than nigeria we have so much strength in depth up front however if we like we can play 10 strikers at a time <laughs> if we do not give them the service oh. they won't score yeah. and i think Iwobi is key to that. We, we, we can't have our most creative player playing next to the defenders. He needs to be in a position where he can have an influence on the game. So for me, the first move would be to, be, would be to push Iwobi closer to the strikers where he can have more of a creative influence on the game. We, in this game, playing the sofa at home, this was a great opportunity for us to really set the tone for the rest of the qualifying season. And we didn't do ourselves any justice by, by, by having our most creative attacking midfielder 
playing next to our defenders. It, it just didn't make sense today. Mm. Mm. But I know, uh, Shala, you, you tried so hard not to put the blame on Francis Uzor. And I want to let you know that when we do analysis, nobody's trying to blame anyone. But Francis Uzor made one save. The goalkeeper from the South made seven saves. Seven. Are you still trying to tell me that goalkeeping wasn't the difference today for Nigeria and Lesotho? Yes. Um, it definitely, from Nigeria's perspective, it was not a goalkeeping issue. You could have put Alisson, you could have put Onana, you could have put any goalkeeper there today. Nigeria, we still wouldn't have scored. Even if Lesotho do score against us, we have enough firepower to be beating this team 4-5-1. Four, five, four, five, so I can't blame Shala, you. Shala, a good goalkeeper would have also stopped that one goal from going in. What, what about the defenders, Austin? Why, were they, why was a striker free in our six-yard box? I think that's the question we need to be asking. He shouldn't have had a free header in the box. Even if we do go a goal behind, we have Victor Boniface, who has scored 11 goals in the German Bundesliga. We have Awoni, who keeps scoring for Nottingham Forest. We have Moffi, we have Iheanacho, we have Lukman playing in Serie A. Why, why are they not scoring against domestic players from Lesotho? That's, it's, it's unacceptable. Even if Lesotho score us two, should be able to score them four. Agree. I All think right. that's a good place to leave it mm -hmm. uh, so we can get on with the show. Yeah. Shall I thank you so much? I thought it was going to be a very difficult analysis for you to do, but, but I think you found a way to crack it. Well done. I'll see you again when we play Zimbabwe. Thank you. All right. So that's it. Our football data analyst. Um, Shall I take Bella speaking to us right here in London? Cecilia, I know, I know you will find a way to tell us that if it's your women, it's easy peasy. But this is football where anything can happen. And I'm, I heard um, Jose Pizero trying to say, oh, we dominated the game. We had ball possession. But you didn't win. That's what is important. Just win. And see what the Spoon Falcons did in Abuja. I mean, just, um, you, you, you <laughs> yeah, know what happened, the Olympic qualifiers. Yeah, so as I keep saying, yeah. the, 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 yeah. the team that will give you joy, give them more money, invest in them, That's and right. you see the result. It's as simple as that. Okay. Now let's take a look at other teams, and other games that were played today. You see how countries can actually beat Minos, yeah, smaller countries. Now, Egypt and Djibouti and the 6-0. Egypt, of course, uh, scoring two goals in the first half. The second half, the four goals came. And Mo Salah scored four of those goals. That's what big boys do during qualifiers. Sudan and Togo ended one up. Burundi and Gambia, 3-2. Gabon and Kenya, 2-1. Botswana, Mozambique. Now, this was a tight one. Ended 3-2. And, of course, Algeria showed their superiority with 3-1 over Somalia. This is what big countries do. Egypt, Algeria, Nigeria should be in this mix. But somehow, yeah, it's not there. Ended one or against a country ranked 153rd in the world. About 2.3 million, less than 2.3 million population in Lesotho. So they came to OU and they collected the points. More like a loss for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. But we'll leave it there. We, there's not much time to do analysis on this one, right? Bolu, one or two things you want to say concerning this? Oh, uh, just leave it. fire on the mountain. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> a fire. So, need so we need to, run. yeah, we need to get good results in Zimbabwe. Yep, very That's one we can forget about and this. And the coach has been talking to people even before this game. So I spoke so. about his foreign players that they should not be scared of super, uh, super Eagles. Eagles yeah. Now they will probably have confidence that if Lesotho can do it here, they can probably do that. Yeah, because he said they are no longer a walkover team. Yep. Yeah, they are awake right now. Okay, let's quickly talk about MPFL games, rescheduled games that were played on Wednesday. And of course, some of these games, just two, you have... Doma United, what do you do to this team? Aqua United went there and they collected. And of course, Aimba also went there. They also collected something. Aimba not looking good for them. 17th on the log. Yeah, I know they were on the continent and also the AFL that they played. But then this is not looking good for this team. They lost by a long goal. Heartland and Bayesa United. Heartland has squandered a two-goal lead to concede two late goals. And that's where they are right now. And if you look at Heartland, and if you look at the numbers of games they've played, seven games they've played, three defeats, four draws, no win. They happen to be the only team left in the MPFL that yet to win a game this season. Nazim Lenians, 
It's not then I played, I just birds of feathers. Uh, both of them, 18, 19 and 28 on the yeah. lot. So I thought after 2 0, Hartland finally getting their yeah, win. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Actually, you, in, just trust me, as at 80 minutes, it was still mm -hmm, 2 0. Mm -hmm. But the game ended 2 2 last last. So it just shows, it capped how poor their season have been. They will tell you MBFL early days, but the rule of the league in Nigeria is win your home games and pick as many points as you can away from home. But home, away, far from home, anywhere. It doesn't look like it's working for Hartland. <laughs> Austin, I mean, far from home, away <laughs> from home, not looking yeah. good. Now, if you look at their position, without a win this season, but then, which was a shocker, uh, which was a shocker for you? Was it Doma United or the fact that Hartland squandered two goal lead to concede late goals to remain winless in MPFL this season? That's so, it has to be Doma United. And you know I love that team, Cecilia, because... They are bringing the sort of energy that we need for league football development in Nigeria. What a story. They now own the Pantami Stadium. Originally, it belongs to Gombe United. Gumbe, but yeah. Doma United, they are teaching Gombe United how to play at home. You mm -hmm. know, when you beat Aqua there, when you make big teams struggle, hey, back coming the now on the bank of needing points on the road, go there, they've also collected theirs. This is a team that is out to make... A valid point. And I think they're doing just that. They have sustained the momentum from last season. They were this close to making it to the Super 6. And they said, no problem. We are new, but let's let these people know that we mean business. And it's a, and it's a privately owned club too. Mm -hmm. So they are staying focused and doing the things that we need to see in a professional football club. So shout out to Doma United. I love the team. I, 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 I say that every time that if you do the right things, that will make people say good things about Nigeria, and I'll just have to love you. Yeah, and aim, but for them, three defeats this season, 17th on the lock. And that goal was scored by Hilary Ekwako, and it was 17 mm. minutes into the game. 17 minutes, right. Aimba could not come back. Yes, we understand their head coach is with the Super Eagles, but then, come on, you're, you're, you're champions of the but, league. But you see, <laughs> don't, don't get carried away. This is Aimba, and yeah. they have shown it time and time again, because yeah, by the time can. you get to mid-season, they start going away, they'll start winning, they'll pick up their form again at home, and somehow you see they'll finish in the top four. That's if they even go to retain the title <laughs> again. So we've seen these things over and over our aim, but they understand the league, and that's why you should give them their, their respect. You know, they do just fine when they need to start getting those results. Okay, much respect, Aim, but was 17th position? Not looking good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, match the seven. You know, you know how MPFL can be, right? Somehow, when you are up there. Okay. All right. Before we leave the show, let's quickly talk about this big one. Uh, Tyson Fury and, of course, Yusik. I mean, it's been on and on and on. And finally, 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 Austin, right there in London, this WBC heavyweight champion, Tyson Fury and Alexander Yusik, of course, currently holds the WBA, IBF, and WBO titles. They had a face-off in London after announcing their undisputed heavyweight world championship contest that will be coming up in Saudi Arabia, February 17th. So already we have a date, we have a venue, everything is set. We've been waiting for no the announcement. No more stories. No more stories, <laughs> Cecilia. You know, and I think they told them, just give Austin and Cecilia and the media something to talk about, you know. Make it a face of that we will, you know, get reactions from. And, you know, yeah. it's not the Gypsy King. He's going to come out there and really get us talking. But, but what a fight this is going to be in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. and, the f and the undercards also are lovely. Yeah. Anthony Joshua will fight on that night. Deontay Wilder will fight on that mm -hmm. night. And right there, <laughs> Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder might even... You know, come out to make an agreement to go on, you know, and fight each other depending on the outcome mm. of their of their bouts. I don't think Joshua will be going against Otto Wallin, who is a dangerous uh, boxer to me. Uh, but this it's not about Tyson Fury and Yusik, and this yeah. one we definitely get us talking. Cecilia, we've got to go. That's yeah. the show. In <laughs> London, I'm Austin O'Connor, and in everything you do, remember, keep talking sports. Bye for now. Bolu, just a quick one on this one before we wrap up. Well, um, the attention was on the AG and the Wada and Co yeah. for Saudi 21st. I said, no, we are the ones with the belt. <laughs> Let's see what happens in uh, February. Now we know the dates of all the boxes. So between December and February, we are definitely going to enjoy boxing fights. Mm. Saudi Arabia, that's where it is right now. Thank you so much, Bobulu, for coming on the program. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cecilia Mogbe. Have a good night, friends.